Hello. Welcome to the second video in the Cybernation Online Dev Blog. This episode is about procedural generation of 3D objects. The building on the screen is our demo room. Let's look what's inside. This metal bar on the floor is the first element of the robot. Soon we will turn it into a more sophisticated thing. Let's add another bar across and merge them. Now let's add another bar on top of the model and tighten the metal skin around all of them. Now we are applying another material to the model. Then certain faces of the model are selected programmatically, and other objects are attached to them. New metal bars are created and attached to the fringes with some gap in between. Once it's done, we can attach other parts of the fringes to the bars themselves. At the next stage, the ends of the bars are selected and extruded a little bit downwards. Now this model looks more like a spider. Let's add another detail, red shoes for the spider. The produced model doesn't have to be static. Attachment orientations can be parametrized and controlled programmatically. The model is 100% defined as the code. That means that all dimensions of the model can be modified, all the components attached in different combinations to produce a wide range of different models for the game. For example, the range of angles can be changed. Simple modifications to the model can change orientation of the subcomponents. Let's quickly create something completely abstract and start with tiny pegs at the end of the shoes. A little reflective ball attached to the end will create a nice connection point. The process of adding attachments continues as long as needed. Each subcomponent of subcomponent can also be animated and controlled programmatically. For example, rotation of the metal things on top is independent of the rotation of the legs. Of course, the generator is not limited to robots. Let's see how the generator can be used to generate an orbital station. Let's start the model from a faceted sphere without any smoothing. Two metal tubes around some of the edges emphasize the shape. The vertical attachments are made of dark metallic boxes transformed in different ways. Now an attachment has been added onto top of the sphere with some antennas and a procedural emissive material that blinks red. Another attachment is added to the bottom. As you can see, some of the attached components have procedural behavior. Two rims around the middle of the station are defined as two-dimensional contours extruded along the circular trajectories. With some detail, of course. External rims don't have to hang in the space. They are attached to the internal rims with metal wireframe supports. A few more details are needed to give the station its final shape. Compare the station to the picture painted by the concept artist. All the materials are very simple and basic. In the future they will be more detailed and give the models nice and polished look. Let's look at a planet surface and see how the robot models fit there. Notice how weapons are attached to the towers of the tanks. Spaceships are also generated procedurally, and they also in turn provide some ground for the robots to walk on. Here I instruct the robot to go over the spaceship as it flies through space. In future, spaceships will be a very common setting for the space battles. Players will be able to take other ships on board, drop their robots on the enemy ships and hijack them. Spaceships are also selectable objects, and the player can control where the ship flies and what it does. That's all for today. If you liked the video, share it with friends, click like, subscribe to our channel. Thank you and goodbye.